On February 7, 2010, Williams was questioned at the Ottawa Police Service headquarters by Detective Sergeant Jim Smith, a member of the Ontario Provincial Police Behavioral Sciences Unit. The interview began at 3 p.m., and by 7.45 p.m., he was describing his crimes. The interrogation lasted about 10 hours. Excerpts from the confession were shown in court at Williams' sentencing hearing on October 20, 2010. In the confession, Williams detailed his crimes, including the Tweed sexual assaults and 82 break-ins and robberies. Some took place in homes in Ottawa within walking distance of his home in Orleans, Ontario where he lived with his wife. Other break-ins and thefts occurred in Belleville, and in Tweed, where the couple had owned a cottage since 2004. He also told police where they could find evidence, including hidden memorabilia, inside the Ottawa home. The couple moved into a new home two months before he was questioned by the police. He told Detective Sergeant Jim Smith that the police were able to find thousands of photos taken by Lloyd, Cuomo, and the two women he sexually assaulted. Then find out on the map where he dumped Lloyd's body. A video of the interrogation was made available to the public and posted online in several newspapers and on YouTube. Court Procedures and Trial Williams appeared before the Ontario Court of Justice in Belleville, Ontario via video link from the Kant Detention Centre on July 22, 2010, with his next court appearance scheduled for August 26. Again via video link, Williams waived his right to a preliminary investigation and so his next appearance in the Ontario Superior Court of Justice was scheduled for October 7, 2010. Williams' attorney then stated that his client would plead guilty to all 82 counts brought against him by law criminal. On October 18, 2010, Williams pleaded guilty to all charges. On the first day of Williams' trial and guilty plea, details emerged of other sexual assaults he had committed, including an assault on a new mother who woke up to a blow to her head while she and her baby were asleep in her home. The first day of the trial revealed that Williams also had pedophile tendencies, stealing the underwear of girls as young as nine. He made 82 search-related home break-ins and attempted break-ins between September 2007 and November 2009. Williams progressed from break-ins to non-penetrative sexual assaults to rape and murder. He kept detailed tracking of police reports of the crimes he committed, recorded his crimes, kept photos and videos, and even left notes and messages for his victims. In breaking into a 12-year-old's bedroom, he left a message on her computer that said, Mercy, thank you in French. He took thousands of photos of his crimes and kept the photos on his computer. Crown attorney Robert Morrison provided numerous photographs of Williams in the underwear and bras he had stolen, and he frequently masturbated while lying on the beds of his victims. Some of the photos shown on the first day of his trial were published in several newspapers. As some newspapers have pointed out, disturbing though they are, the photos were released because they capture the essence of Williams' crimes and show the true nature of his crimes. Among the news outlets that have reported some of the released photos are the Montreal Gazette and the Toronto Star. Ontario Supreme Court Justice Robert F. Scott found Williams on October 22, 2010, to two life sentences with no chance of parole for 25 years. In what is believed to have been the first, Williams' uniform was destroyed by being burned by Canadian forces, as his name was sewn into the cloth. His medals are later destroyed and the Pathfinder is crushed and scrapped. Wikipedia.org Williams gets two life sentences for despicable crimes. CBC Cot. October 21, 2010. A judge sentences Cull. Russell Williams to two life sentences with no chance of parole for 25 years for the first degree murders of a corporal. Marie France Cuomo and Jessica Lloyd. The award winning former commander of Canadian Forces at Base Trenton was sentenced to 10 years in prison in Ontario Superior Court in Belleville on Thursday for both a sexual assault and two counts of forced confinement. He was also sentenced to one year in prison for each of the 82 other lesser charges he faced. Just before sentencing, Williams told Judge Robert F. 
Scott said he was indescribably ashamed of the crimes he had committed, and privately apologized to the families of the two murdered women. Williams, 47, pleaded guilty Monday to 88 counts. He blew his nose before standing up in the Eastern Ontario courtroom to address Scott. Williams was shaking, tearing, and pausing between sentences during his five-minute speech. Your Honor, he said, I stand before you indescribably ashamed. I know that the crimes I have committed have shocked many people. The family and friends of Marie France Quilmo and Jessica Lloyd in particular have suffered and continue to experience deep, desperate pain and grief as a result of what you have done. Williams said he understands the hatred that was expressed yesterday and that was evident throughout the week. I am deeply sorry for the harm I know I have caused. He also said, you have committed despicable crimes, your honor, and in the process betrayed my family, friends, colleagues, and the Canadian forces. Prior to the sentencing, Scott said that nothing surprised him anymore and that he believed Williams' apology was sincere. Fortunately for all, the nature of these crimes is very rare in our society, Scott said. The depths of depravity displayed by Russell Williams are unparalleled. Williams' sentence also includes To be deprived for life of possession of weapons To be registered as a sex offender for life Submit DNA samples to the police data bank He pays an additional $100 fee to the victim for each charge, for a total of $8,800 While Williams is eligible to apply for parole in 25 years, Scott said there is no guarantee he will be released Crown attorney Lee Burgess said he would not seek to have Williams pleaded guilty because it would have prolonged the hearing. He called it redundant because he believed the facts he had laid out during the week would prevent the parole board from allowing Williams to go on parole. Williams will serve his sentence in Kingston Prison. The prison has a maximum security area called G Block, where serious offenders like Paul Bernardo spend the rest of their days in small isolation rooms, some for 23 hours a day. Earlier Thursday, Burgess asked Scott to sentence Williams to one year in prison for each of the 82 robberies and concurrent 10-year penalties for each of two sexual assaults. I have been violated, sir, not only by this man's hands, but through his lens, two young women terrorized in their final hours only for the sexual gratification of this man, Burgess told the judge. Burgess compared the image of Cuomo, blindfolded and bloody but still fighting for her life with that of the man who killed her with a piece of duct tape. Burgess also mentioned how Lloyd cooperated in an effort to save her life and how Williams knew he was going to kill her but told her she would live if she did not fight. David Russell Williams is quite simply one of the worst criminals in Canadian history said Burgess. Applause could be heard in court after Burgess finished his statement. Burgess requested that some of the items used as evidence be destroyed, including Williams' digital cameras, ropes, and stolen underwear, as well as the Nissan Pathfinder he used to kidnap Lloyd and dump her body. This request was granted by Scott. Burgess said thousands of photos and videos taken by Williams documenting his crimes will be preserved for possible review by the parole board in the future. We are a community that has been shocked and saddened by everything that happened, Burgess said. But he stressed that Williams' crimes do not define territory. It is defined by how it is grouped on their heels. You could hardly open your eyes in the days after Lloyd's disappearance without seeing posters or anything about it. We are a society that has also been changed by his crimes. The impact of his crimes extends far beyond his crimes. What makes him even more abominable is this man considered above shame. Burgess said Williams no longer represents the armed forces, which the community continues to support. He betrayed this community, betrayed the military, betrayed the men and women who serve in the army. He was a leader in that basin in the community. He used that to deflect suspicions from himself, he said. He compared how one night, Williams dropped the puck at a Belleville hockey game and later tried to break into the home of a woman he had sexually assaulted. When he carried the Olympic torch, the community came to cheer him on, this guy who really committed the crimes, Burgess said. Defense attorney Michael Edelson said he had no problem with what the Crown Prince proposed. 
There is nothing that can be said to change the outcome and the legal consequences here today, said Edelson. It is not the defense's role to specifically address the impact of the offenses on the victim. But we wish to acknowledge their suffering and do not object to what the Crown Council is proposing. Edelson indicated mitigating factors that Scott must take into account when sentencing Williams. He said along an expensive trial, a case of this magnitude that could take several years to reach a conclusion, was averted by Williams' admission to the crimes and pleading guilty. It is important to note that only 17 of the 48 homeowners reported homebreaking. Until he confessed, they could not identify the suspect, he said. Edelson also noted how detailed Williams' confession was and how he helped police locate Lloyd's body and told them where he had hidden his copious photos and crime trophies. Outside court Thursday, Jessica Lloyd's brother Andy Lloyd said, as long as he's dead in prison, I'm happy. He thanked everyone who worked on the case and said his family owed them. It's over, it's over, said Lloyd. This is the best thing that has happened to our family since these things happened. We just want to be normal again. On Thursday in St. John's, Premier Stephen Harper commented on the issue. Our thoughts, prayers and hearts are clearly with the victims and their families Harper said. Also, our thoughts go out to all the Canadian Forces personnel who know the commander, who were so deeply wounded and betrayed by all of this. He stressed that the Army intends to take the necessary measures to ensure that all possible sanctions are applied. What did Williams say? Your Honor. I stand before you indescribably ashamed. I know that the crimes I committed have traumatized many people. The family and friends of Marie France Cuomo and Jessica Lloyd in particular have suffered and continue to experience deep, desperate pain and grief as a result of what you have done. My attacks on Mrs. Name removed for publication embargo and Mrs. Massacot have caused them to suffer terribly as well. Many of the break-and-go victims I've committed to have been deeply distressed as a result of the invasion of their most intimate privacy. My family, your honor, has been irreparably damaged. The understandable hatred expressed yesterday that was evident throughout the week made me realize that most people would find it impossible to accept, but the truth is that I deeply regret what I have done and the hurt I know I have caused so many. You have committed despicable crimes, your honor, and in the process betrayed my family, friends, colleagues, and the Canadian force.